Hey everyone, and welcome back to Minced Media. Keep watching to see how Disney tried to sabotage the production of Fern Goalie. Released in April of 1992, Fern Goalie The Last Rainforest was a joint venture by Australian and American production companies, Crover Films, Young Heart Productions, FAI Films, and 20th Century Fox. It's clear this movie was made to inspire a sense of responsibility regarding conservation efforts and the effects man has on the environment, specifically the rainforest. They wanted to release the film in November of 91, but due to the release of Beauty and the Beast, it was pushed to April the following spring to avoid competition. The film did okay on its release and was fairly successful, but the details before it came out is where it really gets interesting. Note that this was at a time before Robin Williams was a household name. He had only previously done voice work for a few made-for-TV animatics and Christmas specials. So here we are in December of 91. Robin Williams has only previously played the role of a Kiwi for A Wish for Things That Work. So why did Disney care so much? Well, the writers of Ferngully had initially conceived the role of Batty specifically for Williams, and it was intended to be just an eight-minute role. But by the end of recording, they had a lot more than that. Williams ultimately provided the director, Bill Croyer, with 14 hours of improvised content. Croyer was so impressed with Williams, he actually tripled the screen time given to the character. So what did Robin do next? Well, later in that same year, he would go on to voice the genie in Disney's Aladdin after he already agreed to his Batty Coda role. The Walt Disney Studios chairman, Jeffrey Katzenberg, actively tried to force Williams to withdraw from Burn Gully. He did not want him voicing two animated characters so close together, but Williams refused. According to one of the Fern Gully producers, Wayne Young, Disney repeatedly interfered with the production of Fern Gully, twice taking over their spaces the Fern Gully producers had previously rented by offering to pay more. Eventually, the producers had enough and set up their own studio in a former brewery in the San Fernando Valley. But what did Disney do? Well, they tried to buy that too. Thanks, Disney. It's clear that Disney felt Ferngully would affect their sales of Aladdin, and with good reason. Ferngully also happened to be a first for pop icon and singer-songwriter Elton John, providing his talents to the title song, Some Other World. But Disney took that idea too when they used his talents for The Lion King. It seems Disney places a lot of value on exclusivity with their artists, so much so that they are willing to literally shut down the competition with their level of influence. Unfortunately, Disney is the best at playing the game Monopoly, but that doesn't mean we have to ignore the shady practices they use to win. Thank you guys so much for watching, and please subscribe if you want more like this. Have a great day!